So, welcome everyone to the first general assembly of SCAL360. It's um, a, a general assembly is um, a gathering that is needed for association to happen once a year and we have to report on this. So this is an essential part of our association being transparent and presenting, let's say, what we did the last year, what will happen the next year, uh, giving updates on all, let's say, money, how we spend it and how we will spend it. And um, yeah, also other topics that are urgent at the moment or um, are raised and, and we will handle that in such in such form. I will now start with uh, come on okay the uh, the members list. So Sky 6 is an association has members. Um, these members are divided in three uh, groups. One is the board, the second is the full members and the third is the supporting members. The supporting members is an interesting and important group to us because they are pooled from not, not only but also by purchasing an enclosure. I have to explain this in detail. We as an association are only allowed to sell material that we produce or let produce to our own members. Meaning that anyone who buys something on our store has to become or be already a member. In that case, a supporting member. So any one of you who already bought an enclosure would certainly have read the terms and conditions uh, where it says that by this purchase you agree to becoming a supporting member without any obligation. There is no fee involved, nothing. It's just, uh, it's just mainly the fact that we have to do this because we are only allowed to sell within our own membership group. So we do not produce anything for the public. It's only for our purpose and our endeavor. All right. I will start with a, a year in brief view. What happened since um, Skyhub um, closed the doors, let's say, and we had a transition from Skyhub to Skype 360. So basically Skyhub was set up in February 2020. Um, and we developed and, and created this community up to August 2021. Then this group, the, let's say the board of, of Skyhub decided to close doors and um, the European team decided um, to build upon what was left, meaning to, to take the, the repos, to take the community, to take the website, to take anything. At the end, we kept the community and that's it um, because we decided to go for a completely different uh, concept of hard and software and there was a there was a major shift so we couldn't use anything of the repos from the skyhub times um, we could use very much the the community and all the people that are now developing our mainly part of the, this community. So the whole core element of Sky360 is the community and that's the, the, the basic idea behind it. That's a community driven endeavor. So we are all part in this and we are all members in this. Another topic that was very important for Sky360 um, as the, um, the follow up organization, let's say, to Skyhub is that we want to use better hardware. Skyhub by itself was based on security camera equipment, let's say, that it was available at that time, was, let's say, okay, pretty okay for the purpose, but we decided to have better equipment for what we call the Sky360 network. 
that at the end we hope by 10 years we will end up with 150 150,000 stations worldwide and that needed um, some better or higher grade hardware meaning in optical resolution real-time communication and some others that I will come back later on one important thing also was that we skipped the whole concept of, of Skyhub was that we transitioned from C++ development to Python development. That gave us the opportunity to take on more developers. So I give you an idea with Skyhub, there were only three developers. Now with Sky360, after about not even the same time, less the time we have about 25 developers. So we have more teams, more developers with the same community and this community is also um, increasing pretty good and of course we have a higher goal. So Skyhub's idea was only creating a software that anyone can download and build his own hardware around it without the idea of creating a network of homogeneous stations that create data that is comparable and of scientific use. And yeah, this was one of the important points. That's why this transition was mm, a harsh transition. Yeah. So what we built up since then is the things that we could not take over and did ourselves. For example, the website, of course, this website is our basic element of information, the first touch point for everyone. And for second is the Discord uh, Sky360 UAP tracking server. Um, we renamed that server um, a week ago um, because some people were asking why this is another thing and uh, is it separate from Sky360 and no it wasn't. So there was a need of renaming that. We have uh, over 1,400 community members right now. Um, we also use um, the possibility to sell merch products, which we can from our tax office point of view. Um, and we want to use a kind of um, identification element. So using caps and t-shirts so that people have just their identification with Sky360, the association with it. So if I you can see in some members um, that have their uh, cameras on. Oliver, for example, you can see one of those shirts. Plenty Markets is a platform that we use for selling the material that we produce. And I will again um, underline that point that we have to be careful what we do when we sell material that we produce because we are only allowed first to um, sell it to, to our own members and we have to take care of that we are not selling to the wider public so that this store is not a public store but let's say a private store that is only linked from our website so you only can go to the, this store when you do this via our curated list of hardware. For example, in this case, there's only one product and that's the enclosure. And if you go to the curated list of hardware on a website, um, you go to enclosure and you find the link there and this will end you in plenty markets. There you can uh, purchase an enclosure um, paying via PayPal. It is important for us that Everyone knows that we produce that hardware on, I hope I say this right in English, on a non-profit way. Meaning we calculate production costs, shipping costs, um, import taxes and what have you and even selling taxes. And then we came to a base price, what it costs us. And we put that price as a base element into plenty markets. We have a little add-on it's about 10 to 20 percent. Um, we use this for um, differences in uh, um, currency conversion rates, uh, currency rates. 
um, because otherwise we would always lose when we sell outside Europe, especially in these days. <clears throat> Um, so this is a little bit of a compensation, but it is not more than, let's say, $10, $10 or so in that, in that uh, area. So that's a little marker. But at the end of the year, we as an association, we are not allowed to make profit because we are an NGO. And that's why we have to um, be very careful with our balances and to, to end up at, at a zero at the end of the year or around a zero. We can, of course, take... A little bit of money into the next year but basically we should end with a zero so that's why we are not allowed to earn money and that's why we do not do that so the only thing where we can have an income in a way so that we get um, budget for uh, purchasing hardware for example uh, for testing equipment um, we use patreon as most of organizations like us do and yeah they're we have several patrons. I think for now there are 12 patrons. And we, with, that, with that income, we cover our costs for administration, things like the website, uh, fees to plenty markets, um, fees to Discord, and so forth. So there's several little fees that end up, and yes, that's the, the amount we use the, the patron income for. And then we have Twitter, of course. Um, yeah, for Twitter is more or less um, an announcement channel for us. We do not do discussions there. It's, yeah, we post things that happen on, for Skype 360 and are worth of being announced publicly. So this is our channel in that way. And we have a YouTube channel. Um, as most of you already know, we have weekly dev developer <coughs> meetings. And we also created some how-to videos for the, the people who, who purchased enclosures. So how to, to set up an enclosure. And we put those all in our Sky360 channel. So also for, for developers who cannot, could not attend meetings, they could then afterwards um, check out what, what was spoken and, and see what, what people were discussing. And then, of course, we do a newsletter. Now, statistically seen in 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 side time, in in back back view, um, about every three months um, we send out a newsletter to 1,100 subscribers, and this is more more or less the same that we do on Twitter. A little bit more on Twitter. So, uh, quick review about the community itself. Um, since Skyhub times, we had. Skype ended with 650 Discord members, and now we have uh, over 1,400 Discord members. Um, we have around about 123 weekly visits, visits meaning uh, 12 new members per week. Interesting to know is 61% are coming from the US. 93% 93 still coming from the rest of the world. I think most of them still Europeans, but there is a big group in, in coming from the Asia side. Um, so we have now 19 stationers, meaning a stationer, you become a stationer when you purchase an enclosure. Because when you do that, that step, you decide for yourself you want to set up a Sky360 station. Because for what other reason you would do that. So when you purchase an enclosure, you already become an, an, a Sky360 stationer. That <laughs> results in that you also become a beta tester because you will be the first ones who have that hardware built in and using the software. So you will automatically be beta testers as well. And via this purchase, you also became a supporting member, which um, assigns you automatically the right to attend the general assembly, which is what, what is happening here. And we have 12 patrons and two donors for now. Um, one information I just want to give you is that in the last week we had several changes in Discord, especially for the research and development um, area. And this is only due to, uh, I call it the noise reduction. Um, some developers were um, complaining that there was too much noise from outside in these channels and they couldn't follow the, the timelines because we have to, to think that our developers, we are not an organization where those people are employed. We are an organization 
an association where those people contribute their free time. So we have no no when who is doing what and what, yeah in which time frame. So it can happen that people come back two weeks later and then want to read what happened in these two weeks and if these timelines eat up too much discussion then they skip parts and then they run out of the loop and that is something we do not want to happen and that's why the whole research and development area is uh, read only for the community and of course all developers assistants stationers and supporters have normal access to it um, Another important thing is the development channels because for development you need several things, several infrastructures and I will run it down quickly here. So we have a transition from C++ to Python, which was a very important one. Um, we had, we adjusted the Discord um, in, in the way that it suits our needs more than it did in the, in the, in the, his, in the back. In, <laughs> in back days, sorry, my English. Um, we also use Signal as a back channel. Um, we use GitHub, where you can find right now um, about 10 software repos. We use Clipper, ClickUp as a project planning tool. We use A360 um, for the designs and, and the hardware designs and electronics designs. Uh, there are about eight hardware repos right now. Um, we use the Google Drive for uh, documentation and we have let's say weekly dev meetings which end up in youtube and for now we have around 25 developers um eight teams for soft and hardware so that's a quick view on on the teams and you're already familiar with that pick because you can find it on the website but you net you don't find that on your website because these are one of the most important uh, um, associates, let's say, uh, the sidekicks. The funny thing is, I found out that most of our developers have pets and I asked for those pets picks and uh, yeah, that's, that's the rainbow. Okay. Um, yeah, so a quick step to development. So that's just the, the schematic view of the software development as we see it right now. And um, you can al also see this on, on the website and it's a little bit explained there. Um, for now, we start with the so-called alpha version. Um, this is a little part, so all the, the parts on the right side will be skipped. So the, the, the alpha part will be the left side and the tracker as the, the core infrastructure. And then later on with the beta and the, and the uh, productive version, then we will add on other products and other uh, modules. Um, so I was mentioning the alpha version. Um, the alpha version is our first version. Um, we said we focus on end of September. I hope and I cross fingers that we can make it. If we cannot make it, um, this is also part of the game. We have to be patient enough because this is uh, a um, an endeavor that lives and, and survives from the, the developers and the people who contribute and we cannot force people to contribute so we are happy if someone contributes but we cannot um, make timelines exact timelines so we are still in hope that we can make it by end of September but if we cannot make it by end of September please um, don't slaughter us for this. Um, yeah, it's all contributors and people who are giving their free time into this project. So, um, from September 21, so right after when there was a transition to Sky360, we started with the first discussions into our new concept, hard software wise. We made the, some experiments with hardware, we did read, we did research on this. So we used that time up to now, let's say up to a couple of weeks ago, to, to, to prepare us, to prepare ourselves for, let's say, the first alpha version. Meaning we, we, we tested several hardware, we tested also electronics, um, and so much 
went wrong and so much was broken. But now we are with an equipment where we are already confident that that will be the equipment that we go for in the future. And this is the list you can see here. So we need a power supply. Um, I, from my personal point of view, say 400 watt is enough, but yes, there will be people who want to have more. Um, Board-wise, we go with this lineup. Um, Camera-wise, especially for the fisheye camera, we go with the combination of a Mikey 3.5 millimeter uh, fisheye optic. But we will also use the QHY1 and 3 for uh, the pen tilt focus focuser device. And of course, the GPS USB dongle. Um, that's the hardware schematic that um, yeah, shows you how, how it's all lined up. Um, it also shows you that there's an, still a support for uh, RTSP cameras. And uh, that's an important topic that we also said that when we, trans when we have transition from Skyhub to Sky360, we also want to support all the hardware that's already in use with Sky360. So what you see is also here the NVIDIA Jetson board lineup, and you also see an RTSP fisheye camera like the Tahua or Hikvision cameras. You, so you will be able to use your equipment in the future. But I also have to tell you that the, the QHY183 camera is a much better camera. So think, consider a transition somewhere in the future for a better camera. So coming back to, to the enclosure, this is as it comes out from the, the, the production um, and, and was sent to us and we opened the box and uh, how, that's, that's the view that we have. I want to um, stress the point that the enclosure is no final product. The enclosure is the same as all other hardware or software products that we create. It's all under an evolvement over time. So the software will have better versions in the future the hardware will have better versions in the future. And also the enclosure, which is a hardware, will have better versions in the future. And we are working on redesigning some parts and improving it for the next batch that is that goes into production. And for now, I already can tell you that those two humps in front, they will go away. Okay, so the next batch of production will certainly not have these two humps. They were meant for hinges for the door to, to swing close. Um, but we are not going for a swinging door. We will probably, we're not, not decided yet, but probably with something like a hatch that you can take off and put on. So, um, what about the software? Um, the, 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 the core functionality of the software that we focus when we call it the, the alpha version will include several things that are important to note. One is that we want to use the Indie service for cameras and all other devices. That allows for a big variety of devices to be added. So not only the QHY183 camera that we propo propose will be uh, used, but you can add any kind of RTSP camera, web cameras, USB cameras, what have you. Although we do not Propose web cameras. Um, I just want to say that the possibility is there. Um, another very important point is that our core structure will not will be not based on on a message on a simple messaging system or event messaging system, but on a real time messaging system. Uh, it's called ROS2. Um, this is a very important step towards an, a real-time sensor fusion station. And we are very happy to have a very dedicated person that can help us implement that. Uh, another important part is the tracker, which is actually a three-level tracker, meaning it's had three stages of recognition. The first is a very basic one. It's uh, the motion detection that just reacts on any changes in the sky that is relevant enough to be called an event. The, the second stage is a kinematic analysis that um, analyzes 
the behavior of such um, an event and the track that comes out of that. And the third stage is, of course, the image recognition, where we take parts of what, we, what the, the fish eye sees and let uh, a neural network decide um, what it will be with, with a certain probability. And this gives us three levels of events that are uh, published by a ROS to the master control program that then can decide what to do next, either record that event or send uh, the PTZ to it or do whatever it will, we will come up in the future. And the fourth important part is, of course, the user interface, the front end um, for the station. The front end for the station will run in browsers. So it's mostly JavaScript based, let's say, and it retrieves the data also via this ROS communication. So you get a real time front end. The important thing here is also to note that this front end will be available within the network of the station itself. So if you do not route this station out of your own network, you will not be able to communicate outside of your local network, of course. So this is a routing uh, situation. We will have certainly have, and this is planned for next year, something um, on a cloud storage that also gives a user interface but more or less a different one because it's not station-based, it's, um, let's say, global view-based. And of course, also the, the station user interface will have that global view implemented as well. So here's a quick short, um, schematic of how it changed for the alpha version. So you see that all this, the things on the, on the right side will go away because we concentrate on the left side, which is more or less the, the infrastructure to it. This is a, a view of the free level tracking, where you see motion detection on the left, kinematics in the middle, and neural network identification on the right. And this is the whole process as it loops through. This is a, a view of the user interface. And I have to speed up because I'm a little bit late my time. Um, a quick thing of partnerships. Yes, we are in partnership with the UAP Society. Um, their purpose is to, to, to raise money for UAP research. They uh, initiated already some, some projects and one project will be to establish some Skyway 60 stations on several places on this planet. And we are in uh, conversation with other uh, organizations like schools, colleges and in meteor societies um, with other scientists and so forth for further partnerships, but we are not very um, pressing this. Um, it will grow by time. So now we come to the financial statement. Um, and I give now the word to, to Oliver, please. Yeah, hi. Um, so the year 2021 was not a very exciting year in, in financial aspects. Uh, we started in November with our bank accounts and uh, so the rough figures are as follows. Um, we had an income of 2,600, roughly 2,600 um, uh, euros, um, which was um, um, collected with uh, donations and uh, with a loan. Um, I'd like to say something to the loan. Uh, in principle, we don't want to have loans. In this case, it's a loan uh, which is um, more an equivalent to, to equity. Uh, it can be paid back whenever uh, we want that and it's interest-free. Yeah. So we do not want to have loans in principle because otherwise we would always run behind the money and uh, so that's what we want to avoid. So um, that's the special in the year 2021. Um, we spend our, um, uh, our or your money, it's in principle, it's your money. Um, we spend it on, on hardware. Um, we bought some uh, fish eyes, uh, some um, hard disks to send around. <coughs> uh, so basic stuff uh, just we need uh, to, to, to go on and to test. 
Um, then you see Discord was two booths, I think, uh, November and December last year. And uh, we had some administration costs, um, which was for um, uh, bank accounts. Um, what else did we have? Mainly bank accounts. Um, and uh, also um, major parts, uh, 47 euros for, for an Amazon uh, web store, um, which uh, we killed meanwhile, uh, and um, we went to plenty markets uh, to, to build up our store. Uh, so at the end of the year, um, we had a, a surplus of 1,923.77 euros. Um, we are obliged to spend the money at least the next year after and I think we did that uh, already. Um, so as Richard mentioned, uh, we are not um, allowed to, to make a win like, um, uh, like, like other companies. Um, that's why uh, that's because we are an NPO and we have uh, several regulations here in Austria for, for this kind of NPOs um, and uh, so we want to have it like this. We will have several tax advantages from this um, much easier uh, administration um, also in keeping our uh, financial records. We hopefully will not have uh, any VAT issues um, so we are working uh, on this um, at present um, and so this is um, principle all I have to say to, to the last year regarding our financials um, thank you are there, any, are there any questions yeah yeah I got one go ahead what happens uh, if you get a two thousand dollar donation to pay off the loan, uh, does the isn't that considered an asset? And isn't that a no no to uh, nonprofit? How do you resolve? No, oh, in principle, uh, of course we can do that. When we get a donation of uh, of two thousand euros, we can pay back the loan, um, but it's not pressing because it's my loan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Oliver. We come now to the point uh, where we have to discharge the executive board based on the figures that Oliver presented. And I'm now calling for the full members and I call them um, alphabetically. Um, Brad, do you agree? Do you comply? Uh, yes. Agree, yeah. Boyan, do you agree? Okay. Yes, I agree. Thank I agree. you. Thank you. Christian, you agree? I agree. Thank you. Clemens, you agree? I agree. Thank you. Oliver, you agree? Uh, I will not vote <laughs> on myself. Okay, I agree too. <laughs> so by this um, formally... What? Yeah. Yeah, uh, one thing I want to mention. Um, uh, Christian and Clemens are our controllers and um, we went through all the figures uh, for for last year uh, so they so it's a it's a six eyes principle um, if you would say so um, and um, I, was, I was sneaking this morning too yes you were sneaking too um, so I'd like to ask our our controllers uh, if they think that everything was okay with the figures Yes. Yeah, no uh, resistance. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, we come now to the next point, which is uh, I ha also head over to Oliver, which gives a quick overview <laughs> of the financial status currently and the outlook for yeah this and the coming year. Yeah. Okay, there's some uh, some history in it, uh, especially when we look at the income side uh, this year. Um, and this is regarding the enclosures, which uh, we got um, for, for no money, for zero, from um, Skyhub. So uh, this gives us a good opportunity, which I will uh, come to in a few seconds or minutes. Um, so these are incomes of six and a half thousand. Uh, we had uh, six, around six hundred uh, from our merchandising, um, which changed now. Yannick, thanks. 
and um, also we we got um, a huge amount of uh, donations, um, which is divided into one-time donations. Um, uh, thanks to Tommy for that, and um, Patreon donation donations. So thanks for everyone um, um, supporting us by Patreon. Um, the expenses. Um, Enclosures, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we had no production costs on this. Uh, what you see on this side is uh, just shipping uh, to Austria um, and some uh, VAT we had to pay, uh, which I'm working on, that we can get rid of paying VATs in the future. Um, Merchandising is interesting to see. Uh, uh, it was 450 euros roughly costs for the merchandising products. And as you can see, we um, keep 150 euros um, in eight months out of merchandising. So this is um, uh, the reason why we uh, can do this also as an NPO. Um, this is not a win which is uh, so excessive uh, that we would get in any trouble with this. Um, so then we had the balloon start. Um, I don't know how many of you followed this. Um, there were some costs uh, regarding to this and I see this as a kind of advertising our, uh, our efforts uh, to a broader um, bunch of people. Um, we had uh, a relatively high administration costs of, of 1,100 euros, uh, which mainly is costs for our tax advisors. Uh, so, as I said, we, we started last year in, in October, uh, September, October, and um, uh, uh, to set this all up, um, we just we needed a tax advisor, so I couldn't do it on my own. Um, and uh, so this is this, um, and we bought um, again hardware, um, the QHY, for example, and the Mikey uh, to go on in development. Um, so what? Um, just a rough idea. Our monthly income is always a bit different. It's it's at present between 250 and 300 um, uh, euros a month, and therefore we have expenses of uh, 81 euros, uh, which also will change. This is always in progress, but this is the actual status. Um, what we have to see is uh, that uh, we are looking for an um, invoice regarding being the first uh, 15 enclosures uh, to you, to us, um, which is 1800. Um, and we will roughly, uh, will end up between four and 5,000 euros uh, free cash, um, which we will uh, spend for the next enclosure production, some changes and uh, regarding to the regulations um, uh, to, to our club um, in hardware for testing when something is left. Uh, but we don't know yet. Uh, we will uh, expect a quote uh, from, from Interform uh, for the changes uh, on the enclosure and the uh, production of the next uh, batch. So, at, um, as of yesterday, again, thanks to, to uh, Yannick, uh, we have um, um, 6,400 uh, euros on our PayPal account and 92 euros on our bank account. And, uh, that was yeah. me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, I just bought a t-shirt. Yeah, and do you bought a t-shirt 20 minutes ago and my now my figures are from yesterday. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm fine with that. So, uh, yes, um, this is in principle um, uh, the current yeah. situation. Um, are there any questions to this? Yes, <laughs> Okay, no question? Okay, so, okay, so when we skip over. thanks, guys. Now comes an interesting part. Um, as we planned our network, our global network of stations, we also knew that a station has to have an ID. And of course, stations will have, um, let's say, GUIDs, um, 
IDs that are given by a software process, for example, internal read only. So we knew okay. we had to come up with a user friendly name. And um, we came up with the idea to use uh, the three letter ISO code for countries plus a running index number. And we base this number, the station ID, upon the incoming purchases of, of uh, enclosures. Meaning, because when you buy uh, an enclosure, you intend to set up a station. That's, that's basically it. Because, uh, yes, of course, you can make a station in, uh, in another enclosure. And yes, you can do that. Um, in that case, you would have to ask us for a station ID personally, because we cannot control that. There's no software mechanism in, in place for now. But there is one for the enclosures that, that you already purchased. So we know when you purchased and this gives us an order of, in, of, of entry, let's say, when you bought it, that will give you the, the, the station ID. Um, you will also get a certificate that um, identifies you with that uh, station ID. And yes, there will be changes in the future if, you for, if someone, for example, moves from one country to another. We have to give another station ID. And that person, when he comes back, for example, as an expat coming back, can, can uh, take the, the old station ID as well. So there will be... Um, methods in play in the future how we can deal this but for now we do it manually so that will be easy and here is the list of station ids so this is more or less the the the, the order of incoming purchases and there's one point that i want to ask and especially ask tommy tony from Dunlap USA with USA 7. He said that he wants to give his station or sell his station to someone else, right? And he asked you, is this right? Is this true? Tommy, you there? <laughs> Sorry, say that again. I missed okay. the part. I saw ah, okay. that so part was for- I, I, re I repeat. So there's Tony from Dunlap USA and he got USA 7. But he also said in, uh, in our Discord that he wants to sell the station to, to another station here, to someone else. And as far as I can recall, you, you were in discussion with him about it. Is this true? Oh, that's, is that Artisan Tony? Yeah. Yeah. So is, the, is there now a result? Are you the owner of USA 7? Yeah, I already took delivery of it. I've got it here at the house. Okay, so I will add, give you a certificate of the USA 7 as well. <laughs> I just have to know that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But the, you don't have me on either, though. Pardon me, once again. You don't have me on the list. Tommy, Rockwall, USA, oh. USA 4. Sorry, yeah, I yeah, see it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you that Tommy from Rockwall, USA? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many? I didn't see there? rock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, that's a quick view of our world map that you can find on our website. Um, you still see some orange uh, colored uh, Skype stations because there are some, um, for example, um, Roy in, in Brazil and Cristianos in, in Cyprus. Um, they run their station, still run their station on Skyhub software. But as soon as they have that transition to our software, when it is available, then they also will be integrated in our network as well. And please mind the Portugal one in the center of the Atlantic. Isn't that nice? <laughs> okay, next is the outlook to the coming year which means also this year and the next year. So this year is, let's, uh, let's say the September goal is still the alpha version, but from then on when the, the alpha version is done, we immediately focus on the beta version, improving the alpha version, of course, but also adding um, more methods, sensors, 
functionality and so forth. And one will be uh, the PTF control and guidance uh, device and, and control mechanisms that are necessary for that. Um, a detailed archive management that um, can not only uh, store things locally and, and, and retrieve them, but also uploads them to a cloud storage where they can be further uh, processed. And um, the implementation of a master slave sensor strategy for multiple sensors, because at the moment when we add more sensors, um, there will be sensors that are reacting and sensors that are acting. So for example, the, the fish eye will be a, a master sensor and the PTZ will be a slave sensor because this, the PTZ, PTF will not sweep around and look for events by itself. It will always wait until the, the master control program gets a notification from the old sky cam that there is an event in the sky. And then the PTF as a slave sensor is targeted to it. So in this strategy will be implemented as well. And of course, the hardware side, the PTF prototype, the electronics that are needed. So there's Boyan uh, fiddling with this electronics since half a year. Um, there's, uh, although there's the design, we still have to do this rigging and gearing um, prototypes. And of course, uh, the weather protection. So it also sits in the enclosure and that's why it needs a, a dedicated uh, hut upon the PTF to keep it from weather ingress. And of course, there will be improvements in the enclosure as well. So there's improvements on all sides, software, hardware, and enclosure side. And with these words, um, it's basically what we wanted to present during our general assembly, our first one. We will have a general assembly every year once a year where we do the same where we present uh, what we did the last year where we present what our finance situation is what were the expenses were where the incomes and present that in a public way so you will be able to see this on youtube because i recorded it for today and uh, there will be uh, documents on our website to be downloaded and we will keep this procedure from now on for the future. And if there's no other question, I will stop recording for now.